We should be live, and good evening, and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Uh, things are different, um, so you should be able to notice it right off the bat. Um, as of last week, which I didn't have a show last uh, Saturday because it was my birthday weekend. Uh, actually, my birthday was on Friday, but since everybody in my family works, uh, we celebrated on, on Friday. We worked celebrated on Saturday. But anyway, um, as of last Saturday, Google Hangouts quit. So we had to find some other software, so to speak, to uh, work. Uh, I already had a heads up about Google going to take away Hangouts. So I had tried several softwares, and this, this is called StreamYard. And I really like StreamYard. I like the way it looked. Um, so this is what we're into. We're going to have to use StreamYard to do the Let's Talk Shop with Russ show from now on. Uh, it's kind of nice. I got a banner. I can change the way things are. Everybody now is over on the right-hand side, but I can change that, and I will in a few minutes. So the difficulty is that you're only allowed six people on a show, period. Um, you can have 10, and I can see everybody um individual faces and a line underneath this broadcast and so i can have a total of 10 there but the problem is i'm going to have to flip back and forth and bring people in and out now the people that would be the uh, let's say that i had 10 down there right now the other four would could hear me but well, we i have no way of communicating with them and so it's just going to be too much of a pain i'm going to be talking to the guest if we have a guest or you know how my mouth goes and I'll forget about them and they're going to sit down there and not be able to come into the chat so I would rather just confine it to six and it is what it is uh, I didn't do this I was forced into it by Google so we're just going to have to take the ride the way it is so from now on there will be six of us and uh, if we have a guest there will only be four panel members so um myself, the guest, and then four panel members. So that's the way it's going to have to be. Nothing I can do. You know, Google decided to do this. I'm hoping StreamYard is in uh, beta processing. So um, I'm hoping that they'll make some changes. I'm going to send them an email and tell them I'm a customer. Since they're in beta, I'd like to see 10 people be able to be on or maybe at least nine, because when we go to, here, I'll go ahead and go to this mode here. When we go to this mode here, you'll notice there's um, uh, rows of three. Well, you could squeeze another three people in the underneath there, which would make a total of nine people. So that would be pretty nice to be able to do that. And uh, I can, you know, I can change things around. I have backgrounds. I can have a banner down here below me. The problem with the banner is that um, if we go to certain modes, it covers people up, and also it takes away the people's names. And I don't like that. Uh, I would, I mean, everybody knows what show it is, otherwise you wouldn't be here. It's Let's Talk Shop with Russ. So I'd rather have it like this, where if new people come in, they can actually see the pe person's name and who they are. So I kind of like this better. So... That's the way it is so far. Uh, but like I said, it is what it is. This is the way the show is going to be from now on. Next week, we actually do have a guest, and that's uh, Barn Rat Studios. He's coming back. He's just bought a new property, a new house and barn and everything. So he's going to come back and talk to us next week. So before I get any further, let me talk to my or talk about my sponsors. And they are Devobal Technologies. For web design, development, and hosting, visit devobal.com. FastCap, innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to FastCap.com. Rockler, 60 years in woodworking. Create with confidence. Visit Rockler.com, Bearwood Supply Company. Your best choice for hard-to-find woodworking supplies. Go to Bearwood.com. Clingspore, the sanding specialist. Woodworkingshop.com. Seiko, the scroll saw specialist. Seiko.com. And Scroll NATO. Dust collection for your scroll saw, and you can find them and buy them on Amazon. So... And just a reminder, I have a show on Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time called Scrolling and Making with Russ. Uh, 
other than that, the other thing I wanted to bring up was the palette challenge that's going on right now through the whole month of August, all the way to August 31st. A lot of people that's interested um, and they say they're interested or say they're entering. So that's really great. And also those of you that enter, if you're a newbie, you can be uh, Chris Ahern, which is he can't be here tonight. Actually, he can't be here because he's watching the Jimmy Buffett concert. I'll fold him like <laughs> on you. So, but uh, but he is doing a first time, first place uh, beginner. In other words, for the pilot challenge, he's going to give away some prizes, and that is the Bessie Tool Clamp or Bessie Clamps. Uh, so he's giving away some Bessie clamps. So if you're, this is your first time entry and you are the best of what he picks out, uh, cause he's allowed to choose whoever you want. He says is best. His best might be my best. I might pick a first place person and he, he'll, he says, yes, that's the first place person. And that first place person is a newbie. So they would be getting two prizes, one from Chris and one from, uh, the pallet challenge. So, and whoever the sponsor is. So, but the pilot, the Whirly Gig Wars is going or has ended. Matter of fact, hmm, just thought about something. I'm bad about dates and everything. Uh, I'm just totally bad about it. My brain's going. I will get with uh, um, Barn Rat Studios. We might move him to the next Saturday. The reason is, is I think I want to have the Whirly Gig Wars announcement and the winner's announcement and the drawing next saturday so be everybody's going to get an email so uh be on the lookout for the email and um i should be able to have the if not we'll do it the following saturday um we got a lot of entries got 10 entries i believe it was this year and the judging is going to be very very hard because we got some really fantastic poorly gig war entries so if I, I tell you what we don't have a lot we don't have uh a lot of, I mean, we don't have really a scheduled show plan. We're going to talk about level plum and square, which that won't take very long to talk about. So why don't I do this? Why don't I let everybody introduce themselves? And then after they introduce themselves, I'll open up the YouTube channel and we'll run down and look at all the entries this year for the World of Gig Wars. So let's go ahead and change it back to this. And uh, right next to me in my picture, is Brenda G. So Brenda, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, Russ. Thanks for having me. My name is Brenda G. I'm from Brenda G's Designs. You'll find me on YouTube, Facebook, Etsy, Teespring, Makers Media Network, Twitter, uh, all over the place on the internet. It's always Brenda G's Designs, so I'm not hard to find. I have a live stream that I do with Matt Haas on Thursday night on my channel, and we have a lot of fun. It's called Mind Equals Blown, where you bring your odd but true facts and we give you cowbell rings and virtual tacos which isn't worth much but it's a lot of fun so we hope you'll join us there and i do a comedy series on my channel right now called heifer havens free advice and i do crafts and and woodworking and all sorts of things over there on my channel so i hope you'll join me over there great ken i keep well, on wanting to click on the great. picture I have enough stuff going on as she does but uh my name's uh, Ken Moon. I'm from Moon Pie Creations. Um, you can find me on YouTube, Moon Pie Creations, Facebook, and Instagram. The same. Uh, do wood turning mostly these days. Uh, probably some DIY and maybe a little bit of uh, other stuff too. Great, Dixon. I keep on hey, wanting to click on the picture. Dixon. <laughs> it's Dixon Hoffman, and I'm from uh, Hoffman Signs and Decals slash 3D Printing, and you can find me once in a while on Facebook. Great. Jim Bashirs. Hey, Jim Bashirs from Driveway Workshop. And uh, trying to figure this stream, what the heck's it called? Stream yard. thing out. A little weird, but uh, we'll get it. Great. Uh, Paul. Hey, everybody. Paul Corliss, as it says right down there, from Paul's <laughs> Messy Workshop. Uh, it's Paul's Messy Workshop. You can find me on uh, YouTube. You can find me on Instagram. 
And now I've been working on my website, paulsmessyworkshop.com. And believe it or not, it's starting to look like a website. So if you get a chance, check it out. And uh, hey, send me some comments. And if you like it, fine. If you don't, you're not going to hurt my feelings. And I appreciate you having me on, Russ. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, so um, Luanna Pierce is out there in the chat. Mr. Doughboy356 is out there in the chat. Jim Dockrell. Uh, Steve right. French is out there. Steve French is out there? He is. Oh, yeah. Hey, Steve French. I haven't seen you in a while out in there in chat. How are you doing? Glad to see you. Steve French with Wooden Stuff. Um, Mr. Doughboy, I already said him. Jim Dockrell. Ken McCroy. Uh, the Dixie Doghouse. He's out there in the chat. Uh, Steve Good is in the chat. Good to have you out there in the chat, Steve. Uh, Portal Woodworks. Aussie Man. He's in the chat. Uh, Chris Nealon's in the chat. Buster Stott's in the chat. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Robinson, Michelle Marcou. Going back up real quick, trying Jeff Robinson already said his. Uh, all those people are out there in the chat. Sorry if I, uh, Robert Petri. Okay, Robert Petri. He said, happy birthday to me. Thank you, Robert. Uh, I appreciate that. Ha um, I don't believe I've seen you out there in the chat before. Maybe you have been. I just haven't brought up your name. Um, Katie Dotson's out there in the chat. Uh, oh, she said... Uh, she did say back up earlier, she said, hi, folks, I'm just going to watch from the sidelines this evening. I just came in from cutting the grass and I ain't fit for public viewing. <laughs> when are you fit for public viewing? I'm sorry. I didn't I'm mean to say that. I'm glad you said that, Russ, before I did. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you beat me to that one. <laughs> all right. So those are all the people who are out there in the chat. And I appreciate you all being out there in the chat very much. So just bear with us tonight. Uh, so yeah, let me, um, let me go ahead and do that. I think it's a real good idea that I can go over here and get this set up in just a second, go to the playlist. And there we have the playlist up. All right, so, and I still can share the screen, which makes it real nice. I do like uh, to be able to do this, and it should automatically, when I do this, move everybody around. Oops, I did that the other night, and I didn't want to do it. There. So we'll see how that works. Yep. There we have it. So these are all the entry for the Whirly Gig Wars. And so these, they uh, are actually the way they actually came in. And when you come in, that's the, the way the line formed, so to speak. So uh, Dutch Whirly Gig Maker was the first one. To, the first one is the opening as far as the trailer for it. Uh, so here's his. Oh, why didn't it open up his video? Hey, Russ, Katie, Katie's threatening you. She said, payback will come. <laughs> uh, all right, so here's his. Oh, I already opened it up before. Look at this. That is absolutely awesome. Look at the movement. The horse's legs move. His hands move on the reins. The wheels are going around and around. And a uh, uh, guy's back there with a pitchfork. That is just an awesome, awesome whirly gig. They're all awesome. I mean, this one here is uh, a yeah, Venice. Cool. Yeah. And so look at the movement on this thing when it's, it gets it going. Look at that. 
the water's going up and down, the boat's going back and forth. The streets all flood, just like the real <laughs> Yeah, isn't that so cool? Look at the details. Look at the laundry on the building that he, drew, he painted. I mean, the details are just crazy. And then the hunters. Yeah, I didn't enter this. <laughs> Look at this one. Did anybody notice the other night we didn't point that out that the, the bottom is a gun? Yeah, yeah. It's a shotgun. And the dog's yeah, tail. Hunter dog. It's a hunter dog. Yep. Just for fun, wood shop. Look at the the, the detail, the boat, and then the octopus. Isn't that cool? Next one is Good Grief, Charlie Brown by Wild Larry. Now, for those of you who have never watched uh, Charlie Brown, that's Lucy, and she always says she's going to hold the football for Charlie Brown, and when he runs up, she snatches it away, so he falls and busts his butt. So she gets him all the time. Whirly Gig Wars, Rock a Doodle Doo. You have to actually see this thing, and I don't think it does it in the beginning. I think we have to go through. Yeah, there you go. Now look at that. The uh, blades are his feather tail feathers, and his wings. And his beak moves, too. Yeah, the beak moves. The wings go up and down. He's moving back and forth. Yep. Just awesome. And this is Paul's entry. Paul had a little trouble. Uh, so he had ended up, there wasn't a lot of wind. He ended up using the fan. And those poor little guys on the trapeze are. <laughs> fan disqualified. Yeah, he's not disqualified. You, you can use the fan, but the poor little guys on the trapeze. I mean, oh, look at them. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> they're out, they're gotta, standing out level. I got to yeah. find a playground like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. he didn't throw up all look, Did y'all notice the <laughs> gear that he had? Y'all notice the gears, how he made the gears? That's pretty cool. I haven't seen that one yet, Paul. I have to go look at it. Mark Woodrum. Now that's a cool one, too. Yes, look at this. He's got the horse's legs synchronized, actually like a real horse, the way they run. And that moves so smooth. It's just. Yes, it is just incredible. Look at he uses a worm gear to come off of the props into another gear that turns the motion around back and forth. And look, he's got his head involved. His head's moving. Look at that. That's insane. Isn't it's it, be, though? It's going to be tough to pick a winner. <laughs> I know. That's why I said I might not be able to have it ready by next Saturday because uh, I haven't even heard from the other two judges yet. They haven't even sent me anything, and here it is Saturday. So, And the uh, contest ended last Saturday, so, or last Sunday, I believe it was. So, uh, This is Gary Lucas. Got to get a close-up. He's the guy milk, milking the cow. He actually got, um, uh, what's the channel, Instructables. He actually got mentioned on Instructables for this. Oh, really? That's kind yep. of cool. Yeah. That one just cracks me up for something. Yeah, he's milking the cow. <laughs> he's giving the tits hell. 
Hey, that's what they call them. They're tits. Where's, where's like, the bucket? Yeah, where's the bucket? Yeah, he didn't put a bucket down there. Trust me, I was raised on a farm. I used to milk a cow. I know exactly how yeah. to do it. The only picture I've got with my grandpa is me five years old milking a cow with him in Tennessee. There we go. I think you finally get it in the wind, don't you? I had to put a fan on it. Oh, yeah. You did, too. Well, hold on. I thought we get to see it moving. Uh, yeah, it is. It's in farther, though. It's in farther? Yeah. I like, like all the work we did re -engineer, yep. reverse engineering that thing. <laughs> I'll tell you, that, that other one I found, I'm going to build that thing because that, that one was really cool. Either that or repaint it because it was pretty cool. That's what I wanted to make, but I didn't think I'd have enough time to finish it. Very good. He's giving that hell, boy. He's flying. Isn't that something? You you do all that work, you get it out, and the wind quits. Yeah. So we, we haven't had any, it. Still haven't had any wind over here. Yeah. That's that's the way it is. Trust me. Three weeks, we haven't had hardly any wind at all. Oxy Man said, "Are you sure it's a cow and not a bull?" No, that was a cow. <laughs> That was a cow. I uh, say just to, just in your defense, I was going to make that joke too, but I didn't want to throw it out there. Okay? He's missing the part where the guy gets his head kicked off. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you said. Have y'all, uh, <laughs> anybody here? I know Jim just said he has anybody else milk cows. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brent yep. on, dairy farm. Up on a farm. Yep. Sure did. Yeah. Um, Got to tell this little story real quick. And uh, it's about me and my brother. He st we still laugh about this uh, from time to time. Trust me. Oops, wrong one. I want to do this one. Ooh. Time to time. Trust me. Uh, so uh, I, he's 10 years older. My brother is 10 years older than me. And so I was probably about five, four or five years old, fixing to start school. Hadn't started school yet. So he was naturally up there around uh, 15 years old, 14. So we were going down to the barn. I used to go down there with him when he milked the cow. So one day we were standing there and uh, he took the, the cow's tit and turned it and hollered at me. He says, hey, Russ, look over here. And so when I turned around, he just squirted me all over my face <laughs> with, the, with the milk, you know. So yeah, I was like, um, oh, that ticked me off. Oh, he was always picking on me. So I went and got a shovel. And I waited for him to come out of the barn and I had a nice, fresh, steaming, hot <laughs> pile of cow manure and I slung it all over him. Oh, yeah. My dad laughed and told him, well, that's what you get for picking on him until he found out the manure got in the milk. That's when I got oh, my ass oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was good up until... He found out I had manure in the milk. <laughs> or I got manure in the milk. So it was good up to that point. Then I got my butt beat. So, yeah. Yeah. Hall John's life is out there in the chat. Good to have you here. I appreciate you being here very much. It but, looks like uh, for those who have just come in, uh, this is the new format. Google Hangouts is gone, it is no more. Uh, we are using StreamYard. In some ways, I like it better because uh, I can do more things. For instance, is br if uh, Brenda is the guest tonight, for instance, I can put her on full screen so she can show us whatever she wants to show us or whatever. So that's that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You hold up. You, you got to ring before you do that. Ring, ring the damn thing if you're going to bring it out. More cowbell? Yeah. <laughs> I noticed Jim Bashir took his headset off. <laughs> so I can have it like that. We can have it like this. That's pretty nice. Uh, the other way, which was, we did was earlier, was yeah, you can always be all be real blown up. 
So I particularly don't like this mode as much as I like this mode. Steve Good says you could probably get more views if you just leave Brenda on the screen. Yep, yep. There you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So, but yeah, if I want to make an announcement, what? <laughs> he just dropped no, off. No, no. He 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 pushed the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. Oh my God, I hit the wrong button. The show now. I can do so <laughs> low. Hey, I keep it up. I'll just be like this for the rest of the night. <laughs> I can do so low myself, or like I said, I can do it like this. Now, the bad thing I don't like about this is I wish there was a way to uh, bring like each person over into this area like I'm doing right now, but it won't let you do it. The only thing you can do is just uh, solo the person. So, hey, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, it'll be better if they automatically go up there as they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they may, they may change that to make it better. Yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they will. There's Ken. I like the background that you can have a background, wood background. Yeah, I can have a wood background and put anything up there basically I want. And then I can have band, I can have my uh, uh, yeah. brand put up there. Your logo and, and your banner. and. Yeah. Now, when when you guys hit the mute, does the, does the mute end up in the center of your screen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they got to change that. Like when Russ is talking and we have to hit mute, it, it's right in the middle of his screen. Yeah, yeah. Blocks everything. move that into the side or something. Oh, uh, no, hit mute again. Yeah, when you hit mute, it says you're muted right in the middle of the screen. Yeah, it's right it, in the it, middle of your screen. It was blocking. I know, but it's on your screen, not right. on the outside screen. Right, right, right. right. It blocks. Yeah. I couldn't see some of the images until I unmuted. Oh, it. I see what you're saying. I couldn't okay. see the, yeah. Yeah, I, I, had, I had to look over at the YouTube. Right, I look at my big 48 now, this screen. Now, real good until I go like this, then whoever's at the top, which is Brenda, gets covered up by my logo. So. Right. Oh, you must have the, you must have the, they don't have their little logo, so you must be having, you must have the paid. Yeah, yeah I version. Do, I'm doing the paid version. I'll rake my tin cup across your bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing the paid version, so. Yeah. See, they, they can't see it, but I see the live, how long we've been up live, up in yeah. the top left-hand corner. That's right. cool. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, it's got its good points. The only bad thing that I, yeah, I wished it, if it would have 10 or 9, even 9 people, I'd be happy. Uh, other than that, yeah. Okay, they're saying out in the chat that they can't see it when it says that we're muted, you know. No. We, we understand that. But the thing of it is... We can see it, and we can't see what's on the screen behind it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we're saying. Is that Here, we let me try it? I've never that. tried to mute mute myself. We cannot hear you, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my I'll, I'll say this: the quality, the video quality in this program and up on youtube is better than the yeah yeah. The yeah it's really it's really clear it looks up really nice on a big screen when i do the mute mine don't cover up everything oh it uh, it covers up the okay <laughs> I mean, it's not that big, but you just can't. When when the screen is like this, it's not bad. Yeah. But, uh, like when somebody's full size, it's just right in the middle of the picture. Hey, did you see what Steve put? Uh, and I tested it. When we hit mute on our screen, it comes up on their screen has a little icon or right in front of where our name is at. That yeah, it, it comes yeah. up on ours too. Yeah. 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 It's a nice program for what it is. I mean, they're just getting started with it. So I'm willing to give them a chance to uh, improve on it and fly with it. Yeah, yeah. I, most definitely. Uh, um, it's definitely not uh, a bad thing at all. Uh, 
I can live with everything if they just add more people. Mm -hmm. I would definitely live with it. I kind of uh, like it. Yeah. If they could just add more people. Yeah. But other than I talked about the palette challenge. Um Let me go ahead and share my screen one more time, and I'll pull up the uh, pilot challenge over on my website. I heard, I heard uh, that uh, that uh, uh, Shane was going to win. That's what I heard, but, I mean, he told me that. <laughs> so. I think I saw where Shane said he was going to stay out of it this year so somebody else could win. Did he say that? Yeah, he said that in Facebook someplace. I don't remember where. I think it was when Chris was talking trash to him. Yeah, that probably was it. Yeah. All right. Can we see my screen? Yep. Yes. yes. All right. This is the uh, pilot challenge. If you want to find it, go to my home page which is here and uh, come across the challenges, pilot upcycle challenge, the 2019 pilot upcycle challenge. Here's all the rules. I'm not going to read them out tonight because I have to, to take too long. If you want to enter, just go over there and read them. Uh, and uh, some of these are going to change. I haven't got a confirmation from uh, Clearview Cyclones and Soft Stop yet. But I have got the rest uh, confirmations. Clean Spores Woodworking Shop is giving away a $25 gift card. Uh, this is be best first time entry is coming from Chris Ahern. We talked about earlier. Uh, Fast Cap hasn't confirmed, but I know they're going to send something, whether it's going to be the 2P10 kits or the Carpenter Tape and HiBot. And then BP Way is giving away a $25 gift code to their website so you can order something. And Kai Azan Inserts is giving away a $25 gift code. So those are our sponsors. So there you have it. So you stop sharing. Steve, Steve Good back. wants to know if you can make a whirly gig out of a pallet and win twice. <laughs> I had somebody ask me that last year. Oh, and I was like, uh, uh, no, because the whirly gig is the before the pilot challenge. So, so no, you couldn't enter the same one and same one twice. I am going to change next year. And that's a good thing. I'm kind of, um, by you saying that made me think of things and I had it written down and, uh, I am going to change it next year. Normally, we run the pilot challenge in the month of July. Uh, as of next year, it's going to change, which this will all be notified. Everybody will know it. But we're going to change it to the month of June. The whirly gig or the pallet? The whirly gig, I mean. Whirly gig, yeah. Yes. And the reason being, it's too much of a pain in the butt for me to run July whirly gig and August pallet challenge. I need that little break in between. <laughs> So if I move the Whirly Gig Wars ahead to June, we run the Whirly Gig Wars in June. That'll give me a July break, and then we'll run the uh, Pilot Challenge in July or August, and then that'll give me a break till October when we run the Scroll Saw Challenge. So, but I should have done that this year. And I fiddled around and it was already into June and I was like, crap. So, but next year, I assure you, we are going to change the Whirly Gig Wars to June. So that's going to happen. I need that break. It's just too much. I'm trying to get judging done. I'm trying to contact sponsors. I'm trying to change things on the website when a sponsor calls me and gives me, like Chris, I forgot about Chris's uh, actual gift and wanting to do that. So I had to put that on the website. I mean, I just got so much stuff to do that I need that 30 day break in between. So Russ, now, I don't, I, I, I'll tell you the truth. When I saw you putting them both out, I was wondering why the heck you were doing so close together anyway. Well, because it, you have to realize I, those were not my choices. I was given the uh, Whirly Gig Wars by Laney Shaughnessy and he always did it the month of July. Oh, well, heck, you can charge now. 
Huh? Man, now. Well, I <laughs> hold on. Then along came, um, and then I had the uh, scroll saw challenge in October. Then along came Sterling, and he gave me the pallet challenge, which was in August. So July, August, July, August. When I first did it, it wasn't that big of a deal as far as I didn't think about it. But then after the second year, I'm like, oh, this is a pain in the butt. And I, I was going to do it, like I said, this year. It was going to make be the change. And I just screwed around and forgot about it. And it was already in July. And I'm like, dang it, man. And we got my gore challenge going on right yeah, now. Yeah, you got that's right. Yep. Tell them about your gore. Go back you, you're not sending out gourds anymore, though, are you? Uh, I will until the 15th of this month. August? Five okay. more days. Five your more gourd days. deadline is the 15th. Yeah. All right, well, go ahead, and uh, I want to let you do a solo and tell us about okay. the gourd challenge. All right. I'm running a gourd challenge. I had a bumper crop of Tennessee spinner gourds last year, and they're, they're little small gourds, and I make little people and little critters and, and things out of them. There's a little feller that I made. Here is uh, Bizarro Wizardo, little mouse guy that I made. And there is a gourd underneath there. But you can do whatever you want with them. I mean, make wreaths out of them, whatever it is. And, and I send a box of gourds to anybody who wants to get in on this challenge. And what I ask in return is that you make whatever it is you're going to make using the gourds. You do a video. And in the video, you tell them that you got the gourds from Brenda G's Designs. You put my channel in the description of your video so people know how to find me. You send me a couple stills of what you made because then I'm going to do a video with what everybody has made and have your channels linked in. So it's a promotional for, for channels so that people can see all these creative people that are out there and learn all these different things that you can do using gourds. But you have till the 15th to get me your, your name and address. You can find me on Twitter. This is the easiest way to find me. Brenda G's Designs. And um, say, give me your address. And I will mail you out a box of gourds by the 15th. Because, you know, the, the cutoff is the end of August. So you need to have your video up by August 31st and get me your stills. Because in September, I'm going to be putting the video together for you. Very good. Very good. Hey, uh, Russ, just uh, on, along the lines of your contest, have you given any thought to uh, the topic for your scroll saw challenge? No, not as of yet. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had a chance. I was just curious. Okay, so what we were going to talk about is, and I've got some stuff set up, is the differences between plum, level, and square. And I hope, I think everybody knows that, but I just wanted to go. I was thinking about something today and um, uh, there was an issue uh, on something uh, that somebody was doing and they asked me and that had to do with the plum level and square thing. So um, plum for instance, and matter of fact, I found a great website that had all this stuff already on it. I'm getting used to doing this now. I am definitely, and this is a uh, Gentra door levels or whatever. So this is their site. I'm not promoting their product. I just want to, um, they have this cool, I looked through everywhere and they had this cool way of uh, um, saying it. And uh, since we hear these words all the time, you ever taken time to really think about what they mean? <coughs> Equally important, these words can have a major impact on your next door or window, in the window installation, but they also can impact anything you do when you're making build, building. So level, for instance, the best way to describe a level is to imagine a straight line that is perfectly horizontal, as you can see the picture. The dotted green line represents the level. If the door window is installed out of level, it will tend to rub on the jam and it'll be hard to open, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, reveals. If the reveals don't line up, you risk losing the energy star rating on your door window and because of the sash and everything won't seal properly. So that is level. Level is like leveling a picture. Level 
is like leveling um, floor joists. You can use level with floor joists. Um, <laughs> what are you laughing at? I, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the chat and Brenda put in uh, pitches what you do when the project turns out bad because I put something. <laughs> no, that shouldn't be. I, I, I likened it to an aircraft where it's pitch, yaw, and bank. And yeah. <laughs> And Brenda threw the pitch joke out there. I, I forgot I wasn't muted. Sorry. But that's that, you know, that's level. And something can be all right. Let's say, for instance, you have a wall and the wall or the floor is not level with the wall. The floor drops from one end of the wall to the other. Uh, but you really never paid attention to it until you pop a level up on the wall and you hang this big picture. Then when you stand back looking at the picture, the picture don't look right because it's not lined up with the floor. And you go like, what the heck? Is my level broke? But then you check and find out that the floor is not actually the one that's not level. The picture's level. So, you know, somebody didn't pour the concrete right or put the floor joist in right. So that has to do with level. And then plumb. Uh, to visualize what plum represents, take a look at the dash on the green line below. Plumma is the term used to refer to a perfectly vertical, vertical line. This is why we call the clever tool we use uh, the plum or a plum bob. Uh, if the door window is installed out of plum, in other words, if the wall is leaning out or le leaning in, it's going to cause a host of issues with a uh, sagging open in the corner, uh, unwanted open doors, um, and binding. So that is plumb when the wall's standing perfectly straight up and down. Now, uh, I, I'll show you a plumb bob in a minute, but uh, you can use a level to make a vertical wall or a post or whatever plumb. Um, you can use that fine. You don't have to use a plumb bob. One of the benefits, though, from using a plumb bob to make something uh, plumb is the fact that it's not actually touching the wood. You can run it alongside of it. So, therefore, if the wood has any abnormalities in there, it won't change the plumb part of it because you're using a plumb bob and a line. When you're using a level to make something plumb, if the wood has abnormalities, in it, it can actually affect uh, the wall being plumb or not. So that's one of the good reasons for using a plumb. But let's say that you have a uh, beam coming out uh, that is like 30 foot in the air, okay? And you need to put a post in directly below. Uh, the beam's 20 foot long, and you need to put a post in the middle at 10 feet, okay? So... <laughs> I don't know of a level that's 30 foot long, uh, but that would be a good case where you could bring a plumb bob in and you could hang it from the beam up above down to the floor and make a mark. And that would be perfectly plumb uh, in line with that same location on the beam where you needed that post to go. And when you can install the beam and everything would be fine. So that's one of the things plumb bob is held by a string uh, the string can be 40 or 50 feet. Now, when you get something that long, it still works. But what you have a problem with is if you're outside in the wind, it can affect your uh, plumb bob. Or uh, when you're waiting for your plumb bob to stop spinning and waving back and forth can be the longer the line, the longer it's going to take to do that. Trust me. So and then square. Square determines uh, is a 90 degree corner. A speed square, framing square, and T-squares are all good examples of tools used to find square on a job site. Installing a door or window square involves both being level and plumb at the same time is important to prevent the building uh, during operations. Uh, springing open on the corners and again ensure proper seating between the sash and the frame. Take a blue. So you want to make sure each corner at the top and the bottom is actually 90 degrees. And then they have one in here that is true. And this is a good example also, uh, especially on a door, if you're trying to install a door. Uh, but it's one of the most forgotten terms. True represents square on both level and plumb. Axis at the same time, axis, as at the same time on all sides being the unit installed. So 
what they're showing is is this is first one here that is dark black that is straight is one half of the jam but yet when they install the other half of the jam the bottom is kicking out so that is not true both sides need to be equal which is represented on the right hand side so you have to check all those factors uh true plumb square and level I just, and I was trying to come up with something for the show, so that's what I came up with. Let me go over here to this, and uh, this is actually a, okay, you want me to, what happened to my regular old program I used to, Use. I don't want Corel Photo Paint Sketchbook. All right, let's try Sketchbook. Oh, give me a break. You got to go through all this to open a picture. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. that's a plumb bob. And that's pretty much the way I looked for mine today, but I couldn't find it. I've stuck it in some box somewhere. And, uh, but yeah, the string comes down from the top. You can make the string any length and it has the point to show you. And you just hang it. And this is a weight that's usually made out of brass so that it doesn't rust or stainless steel. But you, it want, you want it to be heavy for sure. So that's a plumb bob. So you hang it from the top and waiting for it to stop spinning. And you don't want it to actually make contact with the ground. You want it maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so off the ground so you can make your mark wherever it is at. Now let's see if this is going to let me leave that up there. And then um, a couple of more things that I wanted to bring up with is making something square. Uh, if you're doing a deck or a floor, see, now this is what I wanted it to open up with before. Why not didn't you do that? There's a plumb bottom. Uh, yeah, uh, but this is called the three, uh, four, five method. If you're doing a deck or doing a floor where you don't have a square big enough, I mean, you can check it with a framing square in the corner, but really that's not good enough. Actually, if the deck was big or than uh, fairly big, I would make these dimensions even bigger than the three, five, four. Uh, but anyway, what you do is actually measure from one corner of the beam over and make a mark at three foot. Then you measure from the other corner of the beam over and make a mark at four foot. And then you measure across and you need that dimension on the side to be on that part of the triangle to be five foot. So you move your deck push it, pull it, whatever you have to do to get it to actually that five foot. Because if you get that three, four, five done right, the corner will be and the deck will be square and it'll be 90 degrees. I don't know if any of y'all have ever heard of that method, method or not. Have y'all ever heard of that? Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Yep. I figured most of you had. It's uh, okay. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about real quick is a lot of people don't use them. And now this is a real high class one. When I set columns before for floors, uh, I used a water level because it was easier to do. I did not have, I mean, the perfect way to be would be having a transit. But I, when I first started out, I didn't have a mo enough money for a transit. And so, therefore, I used a water level. Now, this is a high-class high, high class water level. On my water level, all I did was have a couple of clips similar to what those are on there. And I went and bought a bunch of plastic tubing and filled it full of water. So, that's a really high-class one right there. I just wanted to show you. And if you and put a little bit of food coloring in it, it makes yeah, it easier. You put, I, I put uh, food coloring in mine. And um, that's basically how it works. Uh, water will seek its own level from one end of that tube to the next end of that tube. 
over the uh, distance. And I'm talking about a great distance. You can you can level something from one side of the house to the other side of the house over 100 foot and it'll work. Uh, for instance, let's go to this picture here. I know why this is a GIF. That's why it's actually asking me to open it up and to paint. So I just realized that. <clears throat> so there you can see they're putting in posts, but they're using the water level, even though the elevation of the property is at an angle where one post is actually level or lower than the other post they can still get the mark in the same place on the post by using a water level over great distances. Now, if, if long as you're running something like eight foot or so, maybe even 10 foot, if you get a good straight board, like a two by six or whatever, uh, you can use, a, especially doing fence, which you don't have to be 100% accurate. If you're off just a little, you can fudge it, but uh, you could actually put a four foot level on top of like an eight foot or 10 foot two by six and run that span across there and do the th same thing. But a uh, water level is so cheap and expensive and so easy to use. I've used one so many times. Hey, Russ, so, just to, to show you how, like, like you said, how cheap and easy and dependable that is. A few years back, I went to Fermi Lab up here in, by my house in Illinois, and they had that big accelerator ring around the, you know, the grounds there, and they they put these rings in the accelerator ring, and these have to be perfectly level with each other. So they ran this tubing system around the whole thing, and every ring had like a tap on it, and it was attached to the ring, and um, we put or they wanted us, they never to do it, but they, we were gonna put ultrasonic level transmitters in each one of those. And all that information would go back into a big computer to make sure that all their rings were level before they started shooting electrons through them. Wow. So it's just a, you know, they're all the technology that's out there to do level measurement. And these guys chose to do it that way. So well, cause it's, it's accurate. Yeah. It's dead on accurate. Yeah. Yes, yeah, dead on accurate. Order will seek its own level. And so these are just showing the guys doing the uh, uh, same situation where a post uh, coming over here and the elevation's on and he's making a mark. Notice it's the top of this post, but it's a foot or so down off the off of this post, but it's still level just because of the elevations. And here is just another example. So. Well, another advantage of the water level is even like a laser, if you don't have the head perfectly level itself, it's not going to be that accurate where a water level can't be anything but accurate. Yes. Um, water level is pretty well uh, fail proof. I mean, in other words, it's, it pretty well works period. So you know, it's like using a transit. If you don't have yeah. a head level, what you're shooting isn't going to be level. Yes. We yeah. have guys that will take these laser pens and try to line up photo eyes sensors with them <clears throat> and those things are really garbage i mean if it, they, they have to be if you're going to use it for that on the x and the y axis inside that laser pen that diode has to point perfectly straight out of that thing before you know it's going to give you a level line straight across from where it's it's at so you can't you know unless you're paying a lot of money for something you can't trust those things Exactly. Luanna Pierce put out there, says, my grandmother had a rule, no whiskey or beer until after the construction work was done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You get somebody drinking and uh, on the job site, not only is it that they could get hurt, but things can go awry real quick. Uh, yeah, they can go really bad real quick. But uh, yes, and uh, uh, a transit uh, if you, I have, I own a transit. Matter of fact, I need to take it out. And, and, and I, well, first off, I need to find a place. I think there's a place over in Tampa, Florida, that repairs them or whatever. Uh, for some reason, moisture got in to the inside, and one of the mirrors in there is fogged up. So when you look through it, you just see kind of fog. Uh, but you're supposed to take a transit in every so often and have it recalibrated or whatever to make sure that it's it's accurate. But uh, 
Yeah, I I finally later on down the road I was able to afford to buy a transit. When I first started off, I had to use water levels. But yeah, a transit and some Mac Daddy when you're setting something on property for a house or whatever to set the footer height. And Ken just went through that. But uh, they use a transit to set that uh, to make sure they figure out where they want the upper part of it or wherever they want to start. And then they shoot from that point on. And every thing from where that transit is sitting, everything else is going to be the same height. So they can they know how to raise it or lower it. Like, uh, for instance, the, the block, that if you're sitting on a hill, the block might be almost level with the ground on this end. But yet you might be four courses of block on this end because the height of the ground. After yeah, they use one of those laser levels. They put it over there at one point and then shot the laser and they had another the looks like a level that they brought up and down and as it beeped they gave them the level to that next yeah the water. they're no longer yeah they went to laser technology over transits they, i hardly ever see even when they're doing surveying for property i noticed that they have gone to a laser type system rather than the uh, transit system so just uh yeah this one um now this quit working and i kind of got like i liked um upset about it this is a real nice uh, metal it's actually made of aluminum it was a magnetic and uh, magnetic uh, stickers in it and it shot a laser out of the front and out of the top uh, and I used that quite a bit it got left in one of the boxes and moisture got to it and destroyed it so you can see the took out the laser and everything it just destroyed it i was really upset about that because i used this thing a whole Oyster, florida come on russ yeah <laughs> For, i mean i didn't realize it i didn't realize the moisture we got in the boxes like it did and, and get to it but it now it still works as far as if you'll notice it's got oh uh, and i still use it it's got levels this way level this way so it still works for that but as far as even has a level on the back for setting it up. But as far as uh, using the laser part of it, it's just no good. But yeah, I think I paid big bucks and it also had a hole in it to put it on a, a tripod so that you could use it to shoot a line from one side to the other. I've got a bunch of different types of lasers and stuff. This one is the one that I bought when I was doing a lot of tile floors. Yeah, I've got one of those nice. right there. That's a nice. nice. That thing is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it shoots a beam this way, and it shoots a beam this way. So you find, lay out, got got your four kind of layout where you want to start it. You can lay this thing out, and it'll shoot a beam. It even shows on the floor all the way to the wall on both sides, so you can make marks to square off to where your tile's going to be. So it has a little adjustments. This adjustment on the bottom stays out. But these side adjustments, you can adjust uh, them up and down to get it level. It even has two levels on it to make sure you get it nice and level. But yeah, I used this quite a bit when I was laying tile, floor, tile flooring. It, uh, it worked fantastic. A lot easier than... Uh, um, you can make the marks and know they're straightened and pop lines. It wasn't no, in other words, once you found your square and where you're going to start off in the corner, you go from there. There wasn't no measuring anymore, and you just marks and pop lines. So I got a cool one? level from, uh, what is it, Gem Red? Uh, is, mm -hmm. that what, is that what it is? And it, uh, you put it in the middle of the room, you can lift it up higher or lower. And yep. It shoots I've this got, laser all the way around the room. Yeah. It spins. Put it in your floor, yep. Yep, it yeah. spins. Or put it in your ceiling tile. Yep, or, yep. Yeah. Your suspended well, I, ceiling. Yep, that's what you need. Exactly yep. what you need. That's where the company I used water level was on my ceiling tile. I used a water level to set the grid on that. On the one by, above you. Yep. Sure, yep. that'll cool. work. Yep. That works cool. Down by us, a company came in and they set up. We had these brass slugs in the floor. That's your anchor points, and they set up three lasers, and they scanned the press with ten decks. And they could tell after they scanned that whole press, they could tell if one of the decks were off. And it's it's crazy. The software they had, it would tell them within, you know, hundreds of thousands of an inch if any deck was off. Wow. 
I've got um, Luanna Pierce said, oh no, Aussie man. Aussie man 77181 said, my engineer's spirit level has a laser in it and the bubble is accurate to one thousandths of an inch. So the laser in it's very accurate too. So wow, yeah, one thousandths of an inch. Oh, yeah, when you're framing, um, you can get away with a lot when you're framing. You can be an eighth of an inch off and it really not show that much. Uh, when I say that, that depends on sometimes walls are really critical that they have to be dead on or whatever. But usually in framing, an eighth of an inch is, is tolerable, so to speak. But, Gary Lucas wants to know what's the link to the playlist of all the Whirly Gig entries. What do you mean by the link? I'm just going to, I'm just getting it and I'm going to push, put it on there. Okay. Well, thanks, Paul. How long the, how long the uh, videos have to be? No, he wants to know what's the link so, so that we he can watch. Oh, watch so we can videos. watch. Them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's if you go to my web or YouTube channels right here and scroll down some, you will see here. I'm yeah, you ready see. to put it on, Russ. Okay. I you threw it up there. Oh, did you? <clears throat> yeah, it didn't kind of uncompile, but I threw it up there anyway. Cool. Go ahead, Paul, put it up since you've got a wrench. Okay. You're wrenching on there, Paul. I'll You're wrenching that. on there. Well, I say I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just had it up here. Where the heck did that up <laughs> Dead air is not good. Dead air. <laughs> there it is. I already got it. <laughs> oh, you did, didn't you? Oh, yeah, you got that thing ready to go all the time, man. It must be a dead air problem for you. I picked up I picked up my phone. I thought that's the sound I got from my phone. I thought, <laughs> I thought somebody was texting me. <laughs> Uh, so Ken, what kind of snakes did you oh, get into? Uh, loot, there's a loot's loose. What did you say, Paul? I said, what kind of snakes did your dog get tangled up with? Uh, it was a gardener snake there. I ran out because uh, I was mowing the yard the other day. I ran over two copperheads. So it's copperhead season here in Ooh. South Carolina. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be moving to another state. Yeah. Hey, yeah, look what I, I found out we could do. The whole lower part of my house down. So look, look what I found I could do. Hey, how'd you do that? Yeah, it's show it's people in the chat. Bill Lutz is out there in the house. Hi, how are you doing? And it is good to see you and have you in the chat, my friend. Wait a minute. What's a Lutz? What's a Lutz? <laughs> yeah, so. So how do you put them on a banner? Okay. What you do is when you go, like when you have your show, Brenda, mm -hmm. yeah. you'll see the chat. Right. You'll take your mouse over to that person that just posted that chat, and it'll gray out, and it'll have a thing, and it says show. And you just click on the show, and it posts there. Well, la -da. Yeah, ain't that cool? <laughs> And you yeah, thought I, you knew everything about this. No, so I, I, I don't know nothing. I, I did it by accident. <laughs> when I seen Lutz, I scrolled up. As I scrolled <laughs> up, I noticed. Well, that shut he, my mouth. He panicked. <laughs> I started I pushing that, buttons all over the place. I like me a biscuit. Look at how this works. <laughs> Y'all are hushed for a second. <laughs> when I was scrolling up, I noticed every time my mouse went over a hmm. name, it turned gray. Then I look and my eyes are bad, but I could see show. And I was like, well, what the heck is a, a show? And Ken McCrory, Dixie Doghouse, wants to know what's a Lutz. <laughs> That's cool. Now, that is, I like that. So mm -hmm. now yeah. you can bring the chat or somebody post something. You can and highlight the folks out there. And here's actually the link right there. There it is. That's a good little feature. It is. I like that.
That is uh, Paul John's life. Good to have you out there in the chat. Our good friend Aussie man. In Australia, nearly every snake is deadly, and they're everywhere. You're right. Yeah. Australia, I think, has the most deadliest snakes in uh, any place hey, in the hey, world. Paul, Paul, I gotta say, there's no way. Have you not seen the snake video that I posted off of uh, Journeys with Ken and Leanne? I don't even watch snake videos. That's how much <laughs> I hate snakes. <laughs> the sucker snuck up on me when I was doing a video. Scared the crap out of me. Well, I'll tell you, the one video you had when you went out and, and uh, got some wood from those wood piles out in the field, I thought I wouldn't go there for <laughs> nothing. Because I know there's a snake in there just waiting to scare the heck out of me. My, uh, my one this year than any other year. I've seen about, what, 10 snakes this year. So well, I'd be moving. And <laughs> I'm not afraid of snakes or spiders or anything. Well, I would I'd be tempted to move to Alaska to get away from snakes. Yeah. You're almost uh, in Alaska now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We uh, about uh about 8 years ago we drove to Alaska. And from our driveway to Alaska and our trip around Alaska and back was 10,495 miles. Dang. And we did it pulling a 33 foot fifth wheel. Uh, we had, we were, my uh, one son, Chad, is deathly afraid of spiders. I mean, he is deathly afraid of spiders. He's, he was a, a damn, the center for the football team. Big boy, six foot three, you know. 300 pounds and this little this big butt kid will jump up on a, a chair and scream like a little girl when he sees a spider i'll do the I same scream, but it's my war cry i screamed just oh he screams like a little, little girl, girl. Little <laughs> girl we had some stuff out in the back of his yard that uh when he bought the house was left over that needed to be hauled off so i took my dump trailer over there and we we're going to throw it all in the back of the dump trailer well we get these a big what we call wolf spiders here in Florida. Mm -hmm. And they're actually leg span can get to be that big around. I mean they're they can be a big spider. They they don't they won't hurt you. They're not aggressive. They'd rather get the hell away from you. They eat a lot of insects. Matter of fact, when I find one in my house, I my wife screams and hollers. I I capture him and I throw him back outside because he does real good. He keeps the insects down. But anyway, so we were moving some of that stuff, and I moved to peace, and Chad was standing there, and one of those big wool spiders came out. Oh, my God. I thought he was going to poop all over himself. <laughs> and, out of there. and screaming. He was screaming. I'm like, geez, man. He goes, that was it. He wouldn't help me. He says, that's it. Just leave it there if you don't want to move it, because I'm not helping you. <laughs> so, but, yeah. Uh, spiders don't bother me, but snakes, mm -mm, no way. Yeah, snakes or spiders, none of it bothers me. Not I was me. down in uh, Tennessee by where my family's from, and we were over at my uncle's house, and he said, hey, the, the shack your dad was born in is down on this road and this road at that intersection. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to go I'm gonna go take a look at where my dad was born. So we go there, and it's, you know, it's one of these old farm shacks, so it's all in a it's just a big pile of boards and rubble and stuff. And my wife goes, why don't you run over there and grab some of that wood? You can make something out of it. That'd be kind of a cool thing to have. And I go, nope. <laughs> she looked and goes, How come? I said, because copperheads are in that pile of wood and I'm not going anywhere near the, any that or bushes or anything. My grandma taught me when I was, you know, down there in the 60s, not to go near, near anything like that. Awesome. Yeah. Aussie man just put out in the chat, our desert taipan snake is called a cigarette snake because that's all the time you have left after he bites you. <laughs> time to smoke. You get to smoke a cigarette and that's it, huh? Wow, that's quick. I like that. Look at that. I can put it up there. I just you know, every snake that I see like it's a copperhead because yep. they're all over here. Yep. You don't have time to look to see if the head's like diamond shaped. Look, trank. most of you know about the Great Snake uh, Compromise of 2016. If they come in my area, I kill them. 
Well, I'm going to have to watch your snake video. So we had a, uh, uh, when I was working at one of the fire stations, we had two firemen there. Um, uh, I'm going to call, uh, they'll just say their first names, Glenn and Floyd. Glenn was deathly afraid of spiders and Floyd wasn't. So Floyd would just ag him mercilessly when he'd find a spider. You know, he found one, he'd chase him around with it, going to put it on him and everything. So just so happened to be that I went to high school and junior high school with Floyd. So I knew that Floyd hated snakes. So I'm like, all right. I told him two or three times, why do you just keep pestering Glenn like that with those damn spiders? You know, you know, he's afraid of them. Oh, I'm just having fun. So one day we had a pond out back uh, on the fire station and I walked back there and there was a damn black snake about two to three foot long laying on the bank sunning. And I snuck up to him and got him and had him. So I come walking back. I was, I was going to put the snake in like the garbage can or whatever until I could catch Floyd at the right time. But I come walking back and Glenn come walking. I said, Glenn, where's Floyd? And he goes, he's in the bathroom. I think he's taking a crap. I said, oh, no. <laughs> so we went up. I told Glenn what I was going to do. Glenn opened the door. I threw the snake in the bathroom. We shut the door and held the door shut. <laughs> Guess what? Floyd didn't chase Glenn around with any more spiders. <laughs> that's why we live up north paul yeah when, you know, when we had our place in florida i used to go golfing and on the golf course they had these great big signs that says don't bother snakes and alligators and i used to say not a problem yeah, that's not, <laughs> not going to happen <laughs> let me write that down here someplace well, right, no. your story begs the question who had to clean the bathroom after that. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. He had his pants down when we threw it in there. So, and we just held the door shut. And he was like, I'll get you back. I said, you can't. I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm not afraid of spiders. No, but there's something. I, I can honestly say I'm, the only thing that I am is uh, I am a, a, a tinch bit claustrophobic. Now, when I say that, I can get in an elevator and it doesn't bother me. But if I have to crawl underneath a car or something that uh, is above me, there's that thought in the back of my head that if this thing falls, it's going to squash me and I'm not going to be able to get out. So for that, I'm a little bit claustrophobic. <laughs> Other than that, I'm, a, I'm not afraid of anything. Yeah, I just, I just don't like crawling, um, you know, underneath or in a, like a pipe or something. Yeah, you ain't getting my butt in there. I'm afraid to go on a pipe because I think there's a snake in there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, Aussie man says when we talk, when we talk snakes out of camping, or I don't understand what that is. When we they talk about them while they're out camping, oh, when we talk about snakes out camping, we put a garden hose in their sleeping bag and watch them run. A bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got another story about that. Yeah, hey, I Russ, Russ, I got to get going. I okay. appreciate you having me on the show. Thanks, everybody, for coming by. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Uh, yeah, I would appreciate it. We're doing pretty good. We got 31 thumbs up. Right now, we got 32 people watching. So we had as high as 40. So I appreciate you all very much. Um, yeah, my last fire department story is... Um, uh, another fireman, Chris, had seen this big, he was like almost five foot uh, rattlesnake crossing the road. And uh, he had accidentally run over him and he was stunned. Well, he thought he had killed him. And so he picked him up and put him in the trunk of his car. Oh, and brought him geez. to the fire station because he knew he knew that I would skin him. I wanted the skin off of him. And, and I would. I would have skinned him. So uh, anyway, so when he got there, he goes, yeah, I got this. There's about a five foot rattlesnake snake in the trunk of my car. And I brought him up here for you. And I looked at him. I said, you put him in the trunk? And he goes, yes. I said, you know, there are openings from that back seat into the front of the car. I said, if that sucker wasn't dead, he could be inside your car with you when you were driving up here. He just kind of like looked at me. So we went back, opened the trunk real slow, 
sure enough, the snake's not in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. He had gotten, found his way and was inside the car. I had to get him out from underneath one of the seats. He was alive. So uh, we, I put him in a garbage can and we had this outbuilding out there uh, that we didn't use. And I was going to, you know, take him home and kill him and, and skin him. I wanted the, the snake skin. Well, uh, just so happened to be that the guy Floyd was arriving the next morning for the shift exchange. So, you know, that black tubing that you use to cover around air conditioner, com uh, the copper pipes to insulate it. Yep. We had some of that out in the outbuilding. So we took that and kind of like rolled up and put it inside the garbage can. And we set the garbage can over there. So when Floyd come up, Chris was standing there telling him, yeah, man. Uh, I got this big five foot uh, snake and everything and Russell's got him and he's got him over in the garbage can and he's going to take him and uh, skin him and everything. And I said, yeah, look here. So I act like I tripped and knocked the garbage can over and that rubber <laughs> came out of that garbage can and Floyd was gone. <laughs> he took off running. <laughs> took off, man. And that's why you need bail money. Yeah, <laughs> bail money. <clears throat> we had a lot of fun back in the seventies and eighties, all the way up till nineties, uh, working for the fire. It was very laxed uh, when you were out at the stations. It was very laxed because you may not see a supervisor for three or four weeks. I mean, it might be it's just like you. Yeah, it, we <laughs> might be just you. You, the three people there at the station. And that's it. You don't have any. The only time they're going to come and check on you is if something goes wrong. Other than that, you're pretty well on your own. So. A lot, a lot of fun back in those days. Well, I think we are going to get out of here. Um, I hope everybody liked the show. Uh, we will have. I think I am just going to go ahead and have. Um. Uh, Barn Rat Wrigley, I think is his name, on the show next Saturday. Excuse me, I burped. Uh, on the show next Saturday, uh, because I haven't heard from the other two judges, and by the time they get a hold of me, if they don't get a hold of me tomorrow, I've got to e email everybody to get the gift that they want back to be able to do the show. So, um, we'll just plan on that and do the, uh, Whirly Gig Wars the next next week, the next Saturday. So because that even though I'd extended only like what four or five days, it still put everything way behind. But we'll get it done before the end of July because I gotta get it done for the end of July. Or I mean August, because I uh gotta get it done because of, we gotta do the pallet challenge. So all right. So I do like this fact. Uh, awesome man says did you guys get time to put out fires <laughs> <laughs> yes we got time to put out fires when we weren't playing around I sure we assure you we put out fires uh, Luana who said bye oh Luana Pierce said bye guys enjoy the after show good night Luana uh, and Corey says, see y'all later. Yep, they're all bailing, so I think we're going to bail. I got a bunch of thumbs up from Luana. See ya, Moon. Okay. Here we got one from Jeff Robinson. He says, uh, I had a friend at work, General Dynamics, and a special RF frequency room, and when he set off a frequency, everybody had to run to the bathroom. Uh, had to run to the bathroom. Okay, so a certain frequency makes you want to pee? Yep. We were, testing, we were testing miniature turbines. Uh, shop that made them for the military. Miniature ones. They put out 40 pounds of thrust. And they had it in an explosion-proof room. And the frequency, they went 600,000 on liquid bearings, and the frequency got so high 
she cracked the floor, six inch concrete floor, and blew the drywall off the off the walls. Holy crap! With that frequency, it was crazy. I was going to uh, say, if a frequency makes you go to the bathroom, that must happen to our house around three o'clock. Aussie man says Russ is afraid of wives. I'm afraid of my wife. <laughs> yep. Uh, let me come on down here to the end and, uh, she says, I won't leave until the song is sung. Yeah, well, that's fixing to happen. So I appreciate everybody still hanging on with us and being out there in the chat and we'll work this out. I'll get better and figure out all the wheel bells and whistles. I do like that part where I can bring the chat over though. And so what people uh, say, that is very cool. So, um, I appreciate y'all, Liberty Woodworking, Leonard Davis, Luanna Pierce, uh, Aussie Man, all y'all, Ken McCrory, uh, uh, Michelle Marcou, all y'all, uh, Leonard Davis, Jeff Robinson. I appreciate everybody being out there in the chat tonight. I really do. So with that being said, there's only one thing that we need to do tonight and that is just give me sawdust lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere i like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair good night everybody thank you for watching and god bless night yeah. everybody good day. you don't have to go home but you can't stay here <laughs> nope you can't because we're leaving too good night Bye,